I'm here at the Siskiyou Alpaca Farm with John and Christine Gardner and um, their herd of Surrey alpacas and their dogs. I was so delighted to make their acquaintance at our local market and they were sharing a little bit about their vision and their dream and what they do out here in the farm and it was just the most inspiring story and so they were gracious and welcomed us to come out and do a little bit of a conversation and film and introduce you. So how did the two of you meet? Oh, that's, um, how many bottles of wine do you have? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you both possess PhDs, and I kind of assumed that there might be a connection in there somewhere in your story, so maybe going back a little bit there. Well, I was a professional engineer in the UK and Europe. Civil engineer. Civil engineer. Had a wonderful career in which I discovered that what my father had always taught me, my father being a biologist, uh, was that we should seek to work with nature wherever we possibly could. And you know what? We can work with nature anywhere mm -hmm. and anytime. So I was working on river restoration in Northern California. I went to a conference in Berkeley, put on by the uh, Landscape Architecture Department, and there I heard this brilliant British civil engineer talking about the restoration work being done on the Thames. And that was 1990. And to us. <laughs> nice. So that's how we met. There are a lot of principles at work here that are not necessarily just about alpaca. They're about how we relate to the earth. Cooperation really is the essential feature of nature that makes life on earth possible as we know it. There's so many more examples of cooperation than there are of competition. Oh, very much so. And so we're hoping that out of the 18 years that we've been doing this, that we might be able to leave an example of how cooperation can actually put food on our table in ways that we can do next year and the year after, and our children could do it too. You're familiar with Darwin's theories, and they've come down to us as survival of the fittest and, you know, competition and so forth, and that really is the American model in American society, mm -hmm. but it's not correct. It's not what Darwin taught. Not what Darwin taught. And you only got to look at the role of fungi in the soil in support of trees right. to, to realize, wow, this is incredible, yes. where a network of fungi can actually support different trees and recognize when one of them is sick and feed that tree preferentially. Heavens. I really loved your business model. Every income stream is based on sustainability and in working in tandem with and in harmony with the way things work in nature. And so mm -hmm. definitely check out the business model online on their website www.siskyoualpaca.com Oh, look at the beautiful color! Oh, this is cadence. Beautiful cadence. Isn't she something? She's gorgeous. She's beautiful. She has the most amazing capacity. Did you see Scarlet nursing her little peaches? Oh, girl? look there! She, and she's a solid mom. Really robust. Hello. And Peaches was born last June. on a run.
the alpacas um, are nomadic in their nature. They walk to the next pasture. Walking is an essential part of digestion. There's a lot of food here. Right. When we came to this pasture 11 years ago, there was almost no vegetation here. So the growth of the forage that you see in the field right around you here, all of this has become because of them grazing in the weeds in this field. The robust field of forage edibles highlights the relationship between the alpacas grazing and pooping and the health and productivity of the land itself. The gardeners compost the poop and market the rich, clean fertilizer as paca poo. John Hurd's Choban, the gardener's lead dog, out of his favorite place to nap in the warm, fragrant pile of paca poo. Fiber is the shorn wool. We call that wool, fleece, or fiber. Christine shows me how she gently guides alpacas into the shearing room. Bracelet hold demonstrated once again. Uh -huh. See how uh -huh. respectful that is? So this is what I mean about uh, working with uh, respect. Unbelievably soft and sheen. There's a beautiful sheen mm -hmm. down here close to the hairline. More like silk than any other fiber. Income streams at the farm include natural fiber, composted pakapu, breeding stock, and other products about which the gardeners had some initial misgivings. So when you purchased the herd, was it your intention at that time that they would become um, a meat producing herd? At the time that we purchased alpacas, we knew that they were eaten in Peru, and we knew that if we should experience an economic collapse that we would not go hungry. Mm -hmm. We did know that. But it wasn't your intention at that point that that would become part of your income stream. My darling husband doesn't even like cutting roses. I mean, he's a marksman, but he never hunts or shoots because he loves life so much. So I realized that it was going to be my job to uh, help protect the herd by taking out the ones who were less robust. The first few were just flat out kind of hard to say goodbye to my friends. Here's what I learned. I learned that blood is sacred. The source of our protein is a sacred relationship. Our life comes from life. We honor life. Christine shared that she believed the alpacas care about the quality of their lives while they are here, not what happens after they are gone. Christine shares the high-quality alpaca meat prepared with ancient Peruvian recipes. This is the suri, so it is very much like silk, it's very fine fur. A hide much like this, uh, we donated to a woman who is organizing the winter solstice gathering at Standing Rock this year. And that brown Surrey hide is going to be on the altar of Standing Rock. We wouldn't have been able to do the meat at all without uh, tailors, in particular Terry Taylor. Thank you, Terry, Thank you, for, Terry. for his um, kindness and his... Support. Oh, kindness again, there we go. There and is, his right? enormous support. Um, and. We're just so grateful that we, we've managed to attract people into our lives who get it and are prepared to, you know, do what they can to help us. Mm -hmm. um, and we're just right now looking for a young couple to actually uh, follow in our footsteps here and we can mentor them, you know, over a number of years and so forth. I am fully persuaded that relationship building community, working together, working in harmony with the land, with the animals, with respect, with respect for what's present here and recognizing that they were rich with gifts that we haven't even discovered yet. Yeah, one of my favorite examples of that is uh, in the modern science of genetics. I was in graduate school when the human genome began, mapping project began. And, we, and I heard the scientists, the early reports, geneticists were saying, what's all this junk DNA doing here? And it turns out that, that <coughs> what they were calling junk DNA in the 90s turned out to be bacteria. Have you any idea what percentage of the, the DNA in your body 
is human DNA? Take a wild <laughs> guess. Oh, <laughs> probably not much more than 70%. 70% human? We are 90% bacteria. Literally, the fabric of our bodies is 10% human and 90% bacteria. And so this idea of sustainability has permeated our relationship. And before we met each other, right. we've both been fascinated by understanding the processes of nature and how working with nature saves us energy, saves us time, saves us money. Oh, it looks better, smells better, and feels better. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Sustainability at the Siskiyou Alpaca Farm means using farming techniques that protect the welfare of the alpacas and preserves the environment for future generations. Watching these animals move together as a group, that harmonious relationship, right. that's the life that I want to be part of. Watching a group of alpacas walking across the landscape together just fills me with joy. Hey, Parker. Hey. feature of nature that makes life on earth possible as we know it. We might be able to leave an example of how cooperation can actually put food on our table in ways that we can do next year and the year after and our children could do it too. <coughs> If you enjoyed this video, like, share, and subscribe. See my picture there on the right? Click it!